I wrote this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, except to mean of angels messenger and except to mean of destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful guest, Hannah Carr. But before that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching this show, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I love to help women at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so that they can take control of their destiny in here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Hannah Carr, who will be talking about the three secrets she used to reclaim and sustain her energy and how those three secrets could help you. Now, Hannah is a naturopathic nutritionist and owner of The Nourish Body. She helps busy women fight fatigue by balancing their hormones naturally through her 12-week exhausted to energize program. For years, Hannah had suffered with minor lower back pain and various other ailments that the medical profession were unable to help with. So she went on her own journey to find a way to heal her mind and body. This led Hannah to train to become a naturopathic nutritionist. And because of the knowledge Hannah gained, she has completely changed everything. The way she eats, her lifestyle, water intake, the use of naturopathic techniques, which help create movement within the body, and the use of high quality supplements. Hannah's created a free training for you to discover the three secrets that she used to restore and sustain her energy after having two children, with testimonials such as, Hannah is amazing at providing a plan of action and really unique advice specific to my needs. She has amazing knowledge about different techniques, foods and supplements that all work to heal me and pull my autoimmune into remission. Thank you so much for putting me on the right path, Hannah, and supporting me on the journey. And Hannah was absolutely amazing. I got so much more out of the session than I would ever imagined. The changes I've put in place, all manageable, have had positive effects almost immediately. Hannah takes the time to get to know you. It's more than just what you eat, it's the whole picture. She educates and advises you, inspires you, and supports you. Brilliant. So without further delay, hello, Hannah, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, Ray, hi. It's so lovely to be here. Thanks for that warm welcome. And I'm really good today. Thanks for asking. You've Brilliant. definitely been doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> reading those reviews. And you got um, what I do spot on as well. Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, mm. I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments or thoughts, as both Hannah and I want to be part of this show so um, and part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments. Now, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get it, uh, um, get all updates and all recordings. So Hannah, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how the three secrets can help women reclaim and sustain their energy? Yeah, amazing, I'd love to. So my journey really began with my health after I had my two children. So I'm a mum a of a boy who's Oliver, who's 10 now, and my girl is seven. And after I had Oliver, I used to feel tired all the time, which is obviously really common with new parents. And although I had nothing to compare it to, it felt like it was a tiredness that I'd never known. And it was a tiredness that stopped me getting up in the mornings. I felt like I needed afternoon sleeps, but even more dangerously than that, I guess. When I used to drive, I used to feel like I was going to fall asleep at the wheel uh -huh. with my son in the back. So it felt really dangerous and I felt like this can't be normal. So, of course, I went to my doctor who said I might have a thyroid problem and had some checks done and that was all fine. And I didn't really have any other option at that time but to carry on. And you mentioned my backache and I've had this for about 20 years, my back pain. And it wow. started as lower back pain that was like annoying, but manageable. Mm. But it got progressively worse. So it moved up to my mid back and then my upper back. And I was in so much pain that I couldn't actually pick up my son and carry him. Oh. So I knew that something was seriously wrong, but I didn't really know what to do about it. So I just carried on pushing on as most women do. And it doesn't matter whether you've had children or not 
just like life continues, doesn't it? And if you don't know what's yeah. wrong, you, you just have to keep pushing on. But what I found out was that was really detrimental to like your long term health to keep doing that and that you really do need to find out what those underlying causes of your problems are. So I carried on with life, as I said, and until I had my daughter, which was about three years later. And then after I had her, I started to feel even more depleted, like much more so than I ever had before. And so I had this like constant um, exhaustion and tiredness. I had this debilitating back pain. So by this point, I was seeing osteopaths, chiropractors, craniosacral therapists. I was just spending money really that I didn't have. <laughs> but yeah. I was I was in this pain. I remember that I used to just lie on the floor in the middle of the day because lying on the floor and having that support would really help my back pain. But I was also turning to things like drinking too much in the evening to like take the edge off that pain. And then I was fueling with like coffee to keep me going. And I was relying on sugar all the time to like boost my energy. But all of that was then leading to more symptoms, which was like heart palpitations. Um, I used to just feel really shaky all the time. I don't know if you've ever experienced that when you eat the wrong foods. We had a quick mm. chat before, didn't we? You said that you know yeah. foods for you to eat. So some um, listeners might resonate that when you know that you eat the wrong thing and that you get that kind of shaky feeling where your blood sugar levels feel like they really drop. And then I used to feel really dizzy all the time. And so I knew that it wasn't normal. But like I say, I didn't know how to put it right. So visited the doctor again who couldn't help. I then paid for private bupa testing which cost, I, I spent about a thousand pounds on it, but I thought I need Whoa. to find out what's happening. And again, they come back and they said, you're in perfect health. And I thought, well, I'm not, I'm emotional. I'm crying all the time. I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I feel like I'm stressed. Basically, I wasn't coping with life very well. Mm. I chat to my uh, husband on the phone in the day and I, I just say, I just feel really emotional again. I just feel like crying all the time and really impatient with my children and do you know, you sort of take it out on the people that you love the most and yeah. you don't want to. And this is, again, it's really common. You don't want to do it. Um, so eventually I remembered that I'd seen a nutritionist for my son because he was a really fussy eater when he was younger. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my next step was like, please let this next person be the person who's going to be able to help me. And she really did. So she really listened, which is a part of my work that I love doing now is like holding space for people and offering that support and listening to their challenges and what their problems are, because I'm sure you resonate as a woman. We don't often get that um, that space held for us, and we don't want to seem like we're moaning, right? Yeah, <laughs> we don't oh, want to definitely. Keep moaning all the time. Yeah. So she really held that space for me, and she diagnosed really quickly what my particular problem was which was a hormone imbalance, which again is really normal with women. And I had adrenal fatigue. Okay. So she gave me the right diet to follow and the right supplements. And I can honestly say that I felt a marked difference within less than a week. Wow. Yeah, so I realized how powerful it was. And I wasn't healed within a week at all, but I could mm. feel like a distinct difference between how I felt before and then how I felt after following this right advice. So I realized how powerful it was. And that just really led me on this whole huge long journey of learning more about my health, going on more of a spiritual journey like yourself as well, and following those spiritual cues as to what I was meant to be doing with my life. So I was running a different business at the time, which was interior design. Mm. And whilst I was doing well with it, I actually didn't feel in alignment, I would say. So I felt quite stressed and overwhelmed with it. And like I was juggling lots of balls. And so I decided to study nutrition and it wasn't for business reasons to start with. It was, I wanted to go on the course to learn more for myself. Yeah. And that's all I did. And it was, gosh, that journey was absolutely amazing. So every month, everything that you learn, you have to implement on yourself first. Okay. So when I first went on that course, I found it hard to even sit there for eight hours taking it all in. I was so exhausted. I was like still having to perk myself up with coffee to like take the information in. Mm -hmm. But I, and then I was in a lot of pain. So just sitting on a chair, listening for eight hours. And I actually studied in Wales. So I had to travel there for five hours and back for five hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> my children were really young. So I used to get them up really early in the morning and take everyone in the car, like driving <laughs> there for hours. It was it was a... Um, it wasn't the easiest journey, but I don't know, when you look back, and I'm sure you would have experienced this as well, it's like everything's just a learning, isn't it? And everything's yeah. just 
taking you on a journey to the point that you need to get to. And so I learned a lot. I implemented all this stuff on myself and month by month, I was feeling like better and better and better. And so I could see how transformational it was. I was talking about it with passion to my family and my friends, and I was sharing everything I knew with them. And they were telling me, you're going to do this as a business. And I was like, no way. I've invested so much into this other business. There's no way mm. I can let that go. And I was just getting little, I was kind of being led spiritually along the way. And I had someone call me and ask if I was interested in selling that last business that I was running. And I thought this, okay, I'm being guided now, right? Yeah. So I'm meant to take that step. I'd already set up the Nourish Body by that point, And I've been doing it for about a year, but more helping people that I know. Mm. And then that was the real transitional point from uh, letting go of that business and then stepping truly into this into this new business that I run, which is the Nourish Body. And now I feel like I'm really aligned and I'm on the right path. And it's really fulfilling because I'm able to help women really transform their health. And so it gives a lot to me and obviously a lot to them as well. Yeah. So yeah. that's a little bit about the journey. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean that that's absolutely you know an amazing journey, and you know, and the fact that you started for yourself mm. initially, and the way that just progressed and rolled along, and then suddenly you're helping all these other women, yeah, um, you know, with 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 you know their their issues um, that they have. So I mean, every woman is is different, but are there um, sort of like the same? or similarities in the symptoms or the issues that they have? Yeah, definitely. So the symptoms really with the women that I work with are the ones that I've mentioned, they're feeling exhausted. Like it's not just tired, it's not just being able to get up, not being able to wake up in the morning. It's like in the evenings after you've cooked your dinner, like you've got no energy left. You just absolutely spent, these women are collapsing in front of a TV, which is fine to do every now and again. But when you haven't got the energy you need, it's stopping you from doing the things that you want to achieve in your life. So that's the main one. Feeling really overwhelmed with life. So like not knowing what what's the, I was speaking to a, a client on the phone this morning. She's like, what's the first step that I should be taking? I feel like there's so many things that I could be doing. What is the first step? So that overwhelm and feeling stressed are common symptoms. And also like the things I was feeling. So um, feeling like your blood sugar levels are out of balance um maybe having um panic attacks i see a lot of women having and um for me i was having like breathlessness and palpitations so yeah they're the common symptoms and there's a lot of uh, um, basic things that women can do to help overcome that so i'll go through what i'm mm. three secrets that i use to restore yeah. my um my energy and then also sustain it because it's, it's almost quite easy to get over it to begin with and then it's easy to like slip back back into the old yes. habits again. So the first one is like why um, over relying on caffeine and sugar actually depletes your longer term health. And this is a really common thing that I see. And like I said, I experienced it as well. So it's mm. needing that coffee or that tea to get you going in the mornings. And then you're relying on either convenient snacks or maybe like simple carbohydrates like sandwiches and pasta to keep you going. Yeah. And then you drop again and then you feel like you need maybe a bit of chocolate to pick you back up again. Yeah. yeah. So it's all like short term. All of that only works in the moment. But actually, long term, your longer term health is actually going to be getting more and more depleted. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons for that. So the first one is having too much sugar. And when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about refined sugar, really. Yeah. And then those simple carbohydrates as well. So having those simple sugars, if you need it every single day, so you're like you're needing coffee or cake every single day to get through the day. And then with caffeine, with coffee, I'd say if you need more than one coffee a day or ideally not even one coffee a day. So maybe you're enjoying like three or four a week. So it's more of a choice rather than like a need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I'm talking about too much um, caffeine and sugar, it's not like you can never have it, but it's when you over rely on it. Mm. And what it does is it stimulates what's known as your adrenal glands and they sit on top of your kidneys and they produce adrenaline and cortisol. And so it spikes your adrenaline and it spikes your cortisol. So you're producing too much of those hormones. And that's when, like I was speaking to this client this morning, she's walking into a shop and she's feeling that real like anxiety and panic mm. attack of like being around people. Or for me, when I used to watch maybe like a thriller or something quite jumpy, my heart would be racing. I'd be like gripping onto the sofa, <laughs> knowing 
this isn't quite normal. I know this program isn't real life, but still it's really affecting me. Yeah. They're the kind of feelings or for some people, it may be that they can't sleep at night or once they are asleep, they're waking up during the night. So they're the kind of symptoms. And so you're spiking this cortisol and this adrenaline. And what that's doing is it's leaving you feeling exhausted a lot of the rest of the time. So commonly that will be in the mornings, late afternoon, and it might be about seven, eight o'clock in the evening, you're feeling really tired. You try and push through it to stay awake because you don't want to be going to bed that early. Mm. And then when you do push through it and you go to bed, you then can't sleep in the evening. You're like tired but wired. Yeah. don't know if you've ever experienced that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's something I see a lot. So that's how it sort of depletes your longer term health. And then also it messes with your blood sugar levels. And a lot of people will be familiar with this, but you have these sweet things or the coffee and it spikes your blood sugar levels. And then as you're coming down on that crash, you're feeling really exhausted and you're having lots of cravings. And the reason you're craving is you're trying to like stabilize those, those blood sugar levels again. So that's the first one. And I don't talk to people about trying to cut those things out completely, but it is about realizing when you're over relying on them. Mm. And so the next thing is, the next secret, if you like, is some people feel like they are eating healthily, but they still continue to feel tired all the time. And when I see women doing that, it's like they're focusing on all the good things, like the fruits and the vegetables. So they might have um, fruit for breakfast and a, a soup for lunch and then just vegetables for dinner. Mm. But there's two things that they're really not paying attention to, which is letting their energy really drop. And one is protein. And I know in the past that we've had like paleo diets and we've had the yeah. Atkins diets where they, they focus a little bit too much on protein and a lot of uh, heavy proteins are like red meats and mm. cheeses, which actually you don't want to be eating too much of that. But there's also lots of plant based forms of protein. Yeah. So what I recommend people do is when they're making their plate up, that they're just thinking, you're having a quick look at your plate, have I got protein on there? And that might be chickpeas or lentils or nuts or something like that, just to make sure. What that does is it stabilizes your blood sugar levels and then it helps you feel fuller for longer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. often, and I see this a lot with children as well, if they eat um, a carbohydrate rich meal, so like your pasta or your pizza, yeah, and you're not putting the protein with it, it's only filling you up for a little while. And then gotcha. with an hour or two, you're like, I had that big meal, but I'm hungry again. And it's because your blood sugar levels wasn't stabilized. Okay. And then the other one is good fats. And I know a lot of women have been scared to eat fats for so many years because it was like in the 80s and the 90s, we were yeah. spoke about the low fat like era, wasn't it? Of oh, don't, yes. don't eat butter, have margarine instead. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember that. Yeah. And so women really believe that fat is going to make them fat, but it's really only when you're eating the wrong kind of fats. So I focus with my women um, around good fats. And you've probably heard about this, yeah? Do you know yeah. about good fats? So I do, but some of our listeners might not. Yeah, so good fats are um, things like chia seeds or flax seeds or eggs would have good fats in them, avocado, coconut oil, olive oil. I mean, for me, and I hope for most of you ladies out there, these kind of foods are delicious anyway. And what they do is they support your brain. So our brain's made up of about 60% fat. And basically, our body and our brains need fat. And if you cut it out of your diet, you will crave it and you're going to crave the bad fats. You'll be thinking, I want cheese. I want chocolate. I want fried food. And it's like your body has this fundamental need for fat. And if you're not getting it from the right sources, then you're going to crave it from these like convenient sources where you're just eating it really quickly. But that puts a lot of stress on the body. And when your brain hasn't got the amount of good fats that it needs, it's when we become really forgetful and we don't feel very focused in our work. We're not able to concentrate. So it's really amazing. Actually, eating good fats will help balance your weight. Have you ever had an experience with that at all? Have you tried that? Um, well, I actually um, tend to, I make my own chocolate. Oh, now. lovely. Um, and that, which is really, really, really easy. It takes five, five minutes. Um, do you to use actually like make coconut it. oil or do you use cacao butter? I use both coconut yeah. oil, cacao butter, um, cacao powder. Yeah. 
um, maple syrup to give it a bit of sweetness. Beautiful. Um, um, and if I want to make it like a, uh, what do you call it? Um, a Ferrero Rocher, hazelnut oh, nice. butter. What do you put in, sorry? Hazelnut butter. Oh, wow. I need to come and out to yours and try that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and literally, you just put it, you just so melt it all on a very, very, very low heat, pour it into moulds, freeze it, and you've got your chocolate. That you, you know, it, 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 you know that that's the thing. But I do know um, if I have, um, you know, too much bread or too much sugar, then my skin really does um, play up with it, and I have mm -hmm. stomach issues, yeah. um, etc. You know, the other week I had a whole week where um, I wasn't eating any bread, any refined sugars at all, and then I met up with a couple of friends for for um for a brunch mm -hmm. um had cake yeah um and sandwiches oh my god was my stomach playing up that evening because life just Be happens doesn't it so yeah. yeah these things do happen but when you start to feel good it's like you don't want to go back to that mm. do you find that yeah 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 De definitely once you've um you've you, you've done it you you know you, you you don't want to I mean I'm so careful when I look um on food even even healthy soups in supermarkets yeah if, if you look on the ingredients a lot of the soups have sugar in yeah absolutely. or one of one of the um, dextrose or extras you know the exos at the end or the ols at the end like sorbitol and stuff like that but they've got them quite high on the list as well you think this is supposed to be a healthy vegetable yeah. soup yeah but you've got the sugar right at the top yeah absolutely and i think that like our bodies are amazing at detoxing themselves and if we have that occasionally it's fine mm. but i'm what i find for people whose health isn't where they want it to be they're the kind of things that you need to avoid short term to help you start making that progress towards better mm. health so should i share the third secret with you Please. Yeah. So this is a real game changer for me. And the third one is it's like the invisible component that is blocking your energy. And this is something that I hadn't considered at all. And I, I only learned when I uh, saw my nutritionist. Mm. And that was that many, many women are really low on vital vitamins and minerals. And I know like um, iron's a big one, isn't it, for women with mm. and tired yeah. with anemia. But there's a lot of other um, vitamins that balance our hormones that we're either not getting enough of it from our food or our gut health is not good enough. And we're not absorbing it from mm. our food. And the two big ones that really move the needle for my energy were B vitamins and magnesium. OK. Yeah. So magnesium helps produce energy and B vitamins help fight fatigue. Mm. And some, some, some of the B vitamins are really good for stress as well. So I remember when I was really, really not good with my health, I was on a B complex, which is like the range of B vitamins. But I took a B5 on top because B5 really helps with stress. Mm. And the magnesium has really, really helped with producing energy. And then for me, I had things like, basically magnesium relaxes the body. So I was having headaches and mm. I was constipated. I used to feel embarrassed about saying that, but it's just really common, right? So yeah. mag magnesium relaxes the bowel. And then I had a twitch in my eye for about three years. Every night, my eye would just keep flicking, flicking, flicking. I had no idea why, but it's my body was so tense, which is why I had all this backache as well. Mm. When I took the magnesium, it helped relax the whole body. So the flicking eye went, my backache just cleared up really quickly. So I get it occasionally now. Yeah. But it's nothing like I was in daily pain with it before. And I also found out about things like magnesium baths. So that's so um, Epsom salts, which is the magnesium mm -hmm. that you put in your bath and magnesium oil spray. So if you've got tight shoulders or back, you can spray that magnesium straight onto the areas of tension. And when you combine the magnesium with the B vitamins together, that actually helps to balance your hormones. Okay. So what I do with women is we have a look at, I mean, there's various blood tests or hair analysis mm. tests you can do to see what vitamins you're low on. But actually, our bodies give us a lot of feedback anyway. So if you're feeling a lot of tension in your body or you've got like really heavy legs, they're mm. signs that you're low on magnesium. And with, with the B vitamins, if you're feeling tired all the time or if you're feeling stressed all the time, 
it's like you could play about yourself and just play about mm. taking them and seeing if it makes a difference for your for your own body and yeah. so yeah that was a real massive game changer for me and I don't need to take them regularly now it's like a short-term thing that I needed to take mm -hmm. supplements for and then you can maintain it through your diet that's yeah. if your gut health is good enough that you're absolutely that you're absorbing all of those vitamins and minerals so yeah. I hope some of those tips are really helpful for your women I actually offer that as a free training it's about an hour's training where I go through that in more detail and it helps mm -hmm. highlight to people maybe what the missing bits are and, and why it is because yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know why they feel tired all the time yeah yeah and they they, they blame it on on all external lots of external things as to why and sometimes it's a case of just going into your own into your own body into your own self and going actually what's really going on with me yeah um, rather than what's going on outside yeah and looking at it from more um of a spiritual point of view away from nutrition i've really found it's about like having purpose in your life having fun and things to look forward to and if you like hate your job or your marriage is not good or you're stressed all the time you've got nothing to look forward to then it's like purpose gives you energy there are other yeah. areas that I work on with people as well. Like, you know, what have you got booked in for the next month that's fun? What are you looking forward to? Because if it's nothing, then life's going to feel like a bit of a drag anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's really good that you kind of like combine, you're combining, buying, buying the two. Sort yeah. of like the, the um, physical, but also the emotional, spiritual side mm. as well. Because I think sometimes we forget that we'll work on one, but not the other and not the other. Yeah. Um, whereas really we need to be working with, with both together, which is where I think a lot of the medical um, side kind of like lets it down a little bit. If they were to involve more emotional, spiritual stuff yeah. in, in what they do, it'd probably be a lot more healthier people or happier people. I have to say, though, one of my friends has just gone through cancer and she got offered Reiki on the NHS, which I thought was absolutely Brilliant. amazing. I hadn't heard of that before. And she felt like it made a real difference to her emotional health, which really helped her overcome her physical health as well. Yeah. So hopefully it's starting to change in um, in the medical profession now and they're looking more of the alternative yes. um, stuff to, to work alignment because it's not, it stops you using the medical stuff, but it's working in alignment, working now what is best for you because no two people are the same. Absolutely. Completely agree. We, 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 we all we all have we all have different um, things that, that that we do. So with with the um, vitamins and that, are there you know can you overdose on vitamins? Are there certain vitamins you can't take with each other? Um, yes, yeah. There's not really certain vitamins you can't take with each other. Some vitamins are absorbed better at night with melatonin. So like zinc would be um, absorbed better at night, and magnesium because it relaxes the body and helps you sleep. If you find it difficult to sleep, it might be better for you to take magnesium at night. Yeah. But if you're really low, it might actually be that you need to take it a few times throughout the day. So I think at one point I was kind of taking it breakfast, lunch and dinner <laughs> to try and get it into my body. Um, and yes, there are vitamins that you can overdose on. But the ones I'm talking about here, like the B vitamins and the magnesium, they're ones that commonly people are very low on. So right. introducing them at quite low doses, it would be very unlikely that you'd be able to overdose on them. And magnesium specifically, if you overdosed, it gives you loose bowels. So that, that's basically the, the negative side. But yeah. to be honest, most people who I've worked with haven't even got to that point. It's like their body's just absorbing it and, and needing it. Yeah. 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 So, so again, it's, it's your body telling you how much to take, how much not to take and then if people see um see nutritionists like yourself anyway yeah. they kind of like get the idea of what of what they should be taking what dosage they should be taking etc rather than thinking oh, okay maybe i ought to be taking 50 milligrams of this a day when really they only need 25 or yes or exactly and just talking about vitamins i also recommend looking at really good quality sources because you can go to mm. i don't know a supermarket and pick up a cheap one that's quite synthetic and yes. actually that's really hard work for the body to break down and you're not going to feel up a lot of benefits. So it's actually wasted money. So a lot of people say, I've tried it in the past and it doesn't work, but it's because they've not got a form that's easily absorbable or that's natural or that maybe they're not taking the right amount. 
So a lot mm. of the time then, yes, you might need to work with a professional who's going to kind of like guide you. But once you've done that and then you've got that experience, then you will start to know for yourself. Yeah. 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 Which is good. Yeah. Because you, you get the you get the base knowledge um, mm. about what you what you can and what what you, what you shouldn't you shouldn't be taking. And again, it's it's always it's the same with with any food, um, you know, ready made food or anything that you buy or technically anything you, you, you buy that you're going to be putting into your body look at what's on the ingredients absolutely it's um, a big thing isn't it learning how to read labels and you know we don't learn at school do we no no and it takes a little bit something. more time but then you start once you get into that habit then you start to understand like you do so you know maybe to check the soup and mm. yeah so it, it helps you in the future to spend a little bit of time doing it now exactly and of course if you look at certain foods as well you know i'm uh uh, intolerant to egg white so okay. obviously my eggs but I know that I, if I mix up some flaxseed with some water yeah I get my I get my eggy mix you get your flax egg <laughs> yeah I get my flax egg yeah and that, or my chia egg depending if I've run out of flax seeds and I've got and I've got I've got chia seeds there so you're getting the protein again without actually yes. you know which is nothing for possibly I mean most vegans would probably know that anyway because they know mm -hmm. what they you know they research but if you do find that you don't want to be eating certain animal-based foods, yeah, there are alternatives Absolutely. that you can use to, to get the protein, um, calcium, etc., um, that you would get from the normal animals. Yes, yeah, I completely agree. And we're really lucky now, I guess, with the internet, aren't we, that we can get this information really easily now. Mm. You can just look up egg, egg replacement and, you know, five recipes jump up for you, don't they? exactly yeah yeah google is absolutely brilliant um yeah type in what do i need to know today oh yeah well that one that, <laughs> that would not be there oh no there's five ones which one should i go oh, i'll go with that I'll, I'll go with that one so um you don't just um do the nutrition thing obviously we mentioned at the beginning you do that uh was it 12 week um yeah, so I run a 12 week program. And so what I've done is over the past few years, I've been working with one to one clients. And what I realized is that everyone I ended up seeing, there's like a, a base level of health that you need. So I was just repeating the same thing again and again and again and working with people on this one to one basis. And I realized that for most people, it's not information that they need, right? You can get information, you can get it online, but actually it's support and accountability that you need. So if I say drink more water, and then they come back and see me and I say, did you do it? And they say, no. Then we're going to talk about, OK, what got in the way? Let's create some healthy yeah. habits. That's actually what people need. So I decided to take everything that I'd learned and all that experience from working with these one to one clients and put it in a 12 week program where with the group, you've got a community of like minded women who are actually supporting you. So like your friends cheering you on and supporting you if you know, if you don't have a good week and things don't go to plan. <laughs> They're trying to help you get back on. Um, and because it's a group, I actually then offer weekly coaching for them as well. So I do a weekly coaching call where they can ask questions and get that accountability, which I find is what actually most people need. So yeah, it's it actually works better than I would say seeing a nutritionist once a month or a couple of times a year, because I've found that anything in my life, especially with my business as well, when I want to move it forward, it's like coaching and accountability that I actually need. Because I don't know, as humans, it's like life gets in the way and we can yeah. just we just go back to our old habits without thinking about it until someone says, why? <laughs> why did you do yeah. that? And then yeah. it highlights it for you, doesn't it? It, it, it does indeed. And you also, um, I think you do yoga and retreats as well. Yeah, I'm a yoga teacher. It's not... A main part of my business so I have done yoga for 15 or 20 years and I never really saw that much progress with my own practice because I didn't do it often enough and so I committed to doing yoga teacher training a few years back now again for my own practice I wanted to commit yeah. to doing yoga every day and I knew that signing up to a program and paying I think it was two and a half thousand pounds to do the program wow. that I was going to stick to doing my yoga practice yeah. every day <laughs> yeah you're definitely going to be sticking to doing that every day <laughs> yeah and so I did and again that's another massive thing that really helped with my back so it really highlighted how inflexible my spine had become 
and doing yoga every day and doing, uh, you know, like the cobra, if you've ever done yoga, where you push mm. up and back arches, it wasn't easy, but it's brought flexibility back into my back, which has really, really helped just really eliminate that pain. And so I teach at the moment just small classes. I actually do it in people's houses. So like okay. a private class. So I don't hire a hall or anything like that. I found that, I tried it for a while, but I found that hard to promote when I also had a nutrition business as well. Yeah. And because I've got young children, they might be sick off school. And then I was thinking, oh, I need to teach this yoga class. And so what I actually do is teach in the evenings at people's houses when my husband's home and it's convenient for me. I put my kids to bed. I go out. Yeah. I teach that. And I really focus on um, teaching people how to de-stress. That's a really big part of yoga, how to connect with the breath. Mm. And I don't teach them like lots of tricks and we don't even really work on strength and flexibility as much as what you might in another class. But I focus on teaching people how to relax, how to calm down, how to de-stress. Because I find that a lot of people now in modern day, we're so busy that we've, we've lost those skills. Yeah. But I've brought some of that into my 12-week program. So I teach people breath work, which I find is really important. Um, like breath work, how to de-stress, how to calm anxiety, how to sleep at night. And then I teach in that course a yin yoga class as well. So I find that really good to do at night time. So just before you go to bed. Have you ever done yin yoga? No. No. No, so, I've done just the normal basic yoga. Yeah. So yin yoga is where you're really calm in the nervous system. So it's really good for these people that are stressed, overwhelmed and fatigued. And you hold each posture for, say, three to five minutes. And then as you get into the posture, rather than holding all that tension, like this is painful, this is painful, you actually start yeah. to relax into it and as you relax then you're working on your flexibility and as I say you're calming down the nervous system so that's the style of yoga that I teach I found that it really helped me in my life and I, I keep up with my own practice as well because I'm teaching other people so I have to yeah yeah There's that accountability again <laughs> yeah, that accountability. and what about the retreats you run yeah so at the moment I do day retreats so I'd like to work up to weekend retreats at some point in fact, one of my goals is to buy a place in the Dordogne. And this is like one of my long term goals. I'd love to buy a place in France and, and run retreats there, teaching yoga, healthy eating, nutrition, all that kind of stuff. But my next one I'm running is with my sister. So she's also a yoga teacher and she lives in Margate. So we're, we've got one there in December and it's like an alternative Christmas event. So it's to move away from all the commercialism, I guess, of Christmas and to enjoy like healthy cooked food and we cook seasonal food. And when we move into the winter season, the seasonal food is um, blue, black and purple foods. Okay. Yeah. And so they're foods that are in abundance in that season naturally. And if you focus on them, they help support your body. And it's a Chinese medicine. I won't go into it too much now, yeah. but it supports the water element of the body. And if your water element is out of balance, that is when you get a lot of anxiety. So we focus um, on this retreat on those foods. I teach you some healthy recipes of those foods. And we've got someone coming in to teach um, how to make natural products for the skin as well. So um, I find looking at things holistically, you want to avoid using too many chemical products. Yes. Yeah. And so we teach, uh, we've got someone there teaching how to make natural skincare as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so I'm really that, excited about that. And when's that one running? That's the 1st of December. It's in Margate. And if you're interested, that's on my Facebook page under events. Okay. And what we can do, we can put that in the comments. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, for people to, I love the bad retreat. Yeah, because my long-term goal is my is uh, have, uh, have my retreat. Yeah. And that where I'll um, do... Um, you know, future life progression, past life progression, meditation, the angelic crakey, but also I'll hire it out to people to actually come around their own retreats there. Although mine is in, I'm looking at mine in this country, but it's got to have a wood. Oh, um, it's got, it's got, it's, it's like got woodland, wood. you mean? Woodland, yeah. Um, yeah, even even if it's just a small, tiny um, little bit of wooded area within the within the property it's got to have a wood that's my that that's that's my goal in in future life progression i have actually do know that i will be getting it um i haven't actually seen what it looked like but i know it's definitely got definitely got a wood got a wood there so it's brilliant that you're looking at getting you know your long-term goal is a retreat yes. as well yeah so ray sign me up for yours because that sounds amazing <laughs> <laughs> i will do yeah i'll definitely go to the Dodoim. 
Yeah, I think that's and, the thing is um, it's nice to have somewhere abroad, somewhere that's hot, but you do have to travel. So sometimes if you've got somewhere in England, you can go just for a day or two days. Yeah. You don't have to factor in the travel time. Yeah, but then it's um, at the moment, it's so easy to travel across um, to to Europe. Yes. And that, on Eurostar or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not as if it's, you know, and sometimes it's probably quicker to travel to Paris than it is to London from some people. There definitely isn't as much traffic in France, apart from when you go through Paris, which is a traffic bit. Apart from that, the roads are really clear and it's a real pleasure to drive on them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so if we're watching, you're, um, you're going to have some retreats in the future, yeah. both in the <laughs> and here in, 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 the, um, in, in the UK, because... We like retreats. Yeah. We like, I like going on them, and I and, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having my own place. So, as you know, I do um, guided meditation and angel cards. Mm. So, each week, I like to ask my guests um, whether they would like a mini guided meditation or angel card for yourself and those watching. So, Hannah, what would you like? Definitely, an angel card would be amazing. That's fine. We can definitely, definitely, definitely do the angel Thank card. You. In fact, in fact, that's the thing most people always ask for. Okay. And that, so it's like, oh, it's got the cards ready. <laughs> and that's just give them a quick cleanse and a bliss. And when I do um, cards, I don't actually do them to predict the future. Because mm -hmm. um, everything I do, I work for the present. So even though I work with past life regression, that's to take people back to heal their past issues so it's not affecting them in the present. Okay. And when I take people into future lifetimes, it's so they can see and understand what their future lifetime is going to be yeah. so that when they come back to the present, they're not worried about it and they know the steps they want to take. So everything I do is for the present, again, with the cards. So what does Hannah and all those watching need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Hannah and all those watching that need to make their high school at this moment in time? What does Hannah and all those watching this time need to make their high school time? So we've got surrender into the journey, release control. Oh, lovely. Yeah, that definitely resonates. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I thought it might. That's the brilliance of the angel cards. Quite often I don't even really need to go. I'll just show the people and go and go. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that's true um so if it, so it really is kind of like you know just surrender to the journey you're on at, at the moment you can't control everything in your life sometimes mm. you just have to let the universe guide you and take you on 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 that on that journey you know as in this you know it's a it's a boat going through um this way that's just you know you're going to get them on your journey whatever whatever it is you just need to release a little bit of that control um a little bit of control from it and that's so uh, I'm, I'm glad the, the card worked for you there so Hannah have you got any um insights or thoughts to leave our viewers yeah um I would like to say that you need to take control of your own health because no one else is going to do it for you and without your health you haven't got anything else you know you can't work you can't be patient you can't be loving mm. to those that you do love and that it's worth making it a priority and it doesn't have to take a lot of time so it could just be that you just spend five minutes in the morning planning what you're going to do for the rest of the day for your health like have I made time to exercise even if it's just a walk around the block or have I got some am I going to have breaks from my desk today have I got mm. some water handy so um yeah my advice is really just to prioritize your own health because everything else in your life ricochets off of that yeah yeah br brilliant brilliant words and something that we we you know we need to remember and check food ingredients i love that one yeah and just to add ray following that mm. card what you said about just um releasing and surrendering to the universe yeah. i just wanted to share a quick um a quick experience that happened to me the other yeah. day i done um this this training that i do the three um secrets i hosted it via um zoom which is the first time i done that on a webinar and um, I had 160 people register to come to the training. And as people were coming on to the training, they were letting me know via Facebook that it was asking for a password. And I hadn't set it up like that. And so oh. I was kind of stressing at the last minute, you know, when you're doing a video and you're trying to get all organized and people need the password. And then I tried to email my community the password and my email 
um, server wouldn't work. I couldn't send the email. So basically it didn't work out as I'd hoped, but I just surrendered to that when it, it worked out perfectly. It, that was ha for whatever reason, that was how it's meant to work out. And when you can surrender like, like that, my experience is life is just so much more relaxed and less stressful rather than being so annoyed that the email didn't work and that why was Zoom asking for the password mm. when it shouldn't have been? Just releasing to that and trusting that, you know, the universe has got your back really is a really nice place to live from. It is. And I bet you found you had all the right the right people and the energy for for, for that particular session you were running yeah that's it isn't it the right people who need to hear it will always be there yeah 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 that's that's brilliant thank you thank you for sharing for sharing that with us yeah so everyone i hope that you found this um enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom hannah has given you will help you both on your journey so hannah if people want to connect with you how do they do that obviously we've got your um website flashing across the screen oh brilliant um, yeah but, but how else um, could they connect with you if they wanted to? So on social media, I'm at The Nourished Body UK. So I'm on most social media platforms. But the best place to connect with me is I've got a Facebook group, which is called Fight Fatigue, Stress and Overwhelm Naturally. And you'll probably be able to find it just by typing that in. Or if you don't, you can find it from my Facebook page. So at The Nourished Body UK, and you can find the group from there. I've got a really amazing community of about 850 women in that group all going through the same challenges and supporting each other. So if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome and just put that request in there and I'll add you to the group. Yeah, and what I do is I'll, um, I'll put the link um, on the comments. Great. Um, so again, it's something that people can just click on. Yes. Um, if, 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 they, if they want to. So thank you so much for watching. And I would like to invite you all to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can have a chat about how I can help you. Um, I can educate you on what I do and we can see if we're fit to work with each other. And also, if future life progression does interest you and rather you want to actually be able to assist people in going forward in their lifetime or going back to help them with their lives and you're an assistant there, you've already got your own therapy practice or you start your business you want to, um, you want to set up and you, you're thinking, oh, how do I assist people? Oh, future life progression sounds like a good way of doing it. Then I'll be teaching the three-day certified future life progression practitioners training on the 15th, 16th and 17th of November at the Claridon Hotel in Blackheath. So please feel free to contact me for more details and I'll put the link in the comments. Now, next Monday, the 28th of October at 8 p.m. UK time, my guest will be Michelle Budd, who will be chatting about equine therapy. So please join us for what I think will be a very interesting conversation. So again, thank you all for watching and thank you, Hannah, for being on the show. It's been brilliant chatting to you and you've given us some brilliant little tips. So thank you very much for that. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Ray. So thank you all for watching and I'll Bye see everyone. you soon. Bye.